shall I, my brother, live in the sunshine? We'll understand it all by and by. When death has come and taken our loved one, he leaves our home so lonely and drear. Then do we wonder why others prosper, living so wicked year after year? Father along will know all about it. Father along will understand why. Chill up, my brother. Live in the sunshine, we'll understand it all by and by. Faithful to death, say our loving master, a few more days to labor and wait. Toil of the road will then seem so nothing. As we sweep through the beautiful gate, Father along will know all about it. Father along will understand why. Chill on my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it. Oh, by and by, when we see Jesus coming in glory, when he comes from his home in the sky, then we shall meet him in the bright mansion. We'll understand it all by and by. Father along will know all about it. Father along will understand why. Shall I, my brother, live in the sunshine? We'll understand it all by and by. Any song request for choices? Four, four, five, Rock of Ages. Four, four, five, Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee let the water and the blood from thy raven Irish flood be your sin the double cure cleanse me now it's good and far nothing neighbor of my hand can fulfill the lost demand. Could my zip no grace by no? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must say. And thou alone, nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling, make a car to thee for rest. Helpless look to thee for grace, while I to the Fountain fly, wash me, say, or I die.
sticks to a tree. What a friend we have with Jesus. Sticks to a tree. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace be often for me. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We trials and temptation. Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Oh, well, all our sorrow share. Jesus knows our very weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, we wake and heavy laden. Crumble with a load of care. Precious Saviour, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friend despite for safety. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you thee. Thou will find a solace there. Let's sing one more song. After this we have Brother Jonah to guide us in the word of prayer. I sing song number zero. Song number zero, how great thou art. Song number zero, after this we, after this we have the opening prayer. We sing the first, second, and fourth stanza only. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the words thy hands have made. I see the star, I hear the rolling thunder, thy proud true wow, the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the wood and forest blades I wander, and hear the bird sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur, and hear the brook, and feel the gentle breeze. Then sinks my soul, 
my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come, with shouts of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration, and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Shall we ask them for opening prayer? Let us pray. Mighty and gracious Father in heaven, come to you now as your children on this <clears throat> Wednesday evening, singing your praises, glorifying you for you are our Lord and our God. It is you who created us and not we ourselves. And on this midweek, Lord, on this Wednesday night, as we gather here to engage in fellowship, to engage in praise and to engage another portion of your word, you are said, we give ourselves fully to the lesson this evening that we taught by the Wen Kai on how and as he goes through the hymn as the deer, with him, Lord, as he expounds his experiences with this, with this hymn and this song, that we as a listeners will pay attentively, will listen attentively and be able to gather much from what he's about to teach us this evening. Thank you, Lord, for continuing to, to keep us safe, for continue, continuing to provide for us. For we know this is through your grace and through your eternal plan that you have given us this, through this world that you have put in place and all the rules that govern it. Because of this thought, only because of this, we are able to go about our daily lives, we are able to enjoy the fruits of our labor it's because you have set in stone laws that govern it. For this, Lord, we are, we are thankful. We ask that you be with us as we need to enjoy the benefits and blessings of life, to always remember that you has given this to us. And as we, as lenders and borrowers of your, of your graciousness, that we should also be giving and spreading our love and our joy to people around us. As Bowman likes to also like to remember those who are not with us and they are not feeling well, Lord, we ask that you be with them in a special way that whatever treatment that they are seeking will prove effective and they may be able to join us next point in the hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Good evening, brethren. It's good to see each and every one of you here today. And we have our, uh, some special guests with us as well. So today I've uh, selected the song, As the Deer. It's one of the most uh, popular songs, I think, not only in our congregations, but also uh, in, in many other denominations as well. So um, this is, I think, uh, we will sing the so song after my lesson this evening. But basically, um, let me share with you a bit about the background first of the song. So the song, As the Deal, was written by uh, Marty Nystrom, and he wrote the song in 1981. Um, which sprang from an incident in his life which was not actually spiritual motivated, uh, not at least for the beginning. So his song uh, words makes us think that this composer must have been very and really close to God as he sings of painting and longing, panting and longing for, for God. But this is where knowing the song really uh, helps us to also draw closer to, to God. So Marty was a school teacher in Seattle and he had went off on a summer vacation to Dallas and, and 
in Texas to spend time with uh, Christ for the Nations Institute. And he had an uh, ulterior motive, actually. He went there because he was interested in a girl. And uh, However, the prospective uh, relationship didn't work out for him, leaving him very heartbroken and regretful over his uh, choice of spending the time there in, in Texas. So Marty had a roommate at, at the institute who was very enthusiastic Christian, and his, his friend challenged him to fast, uh, to consume nothing but water as a way to draw himself closer towards God. So amazingly, he, he took his friend's advice too fast and uh, to consume nothing but water as a way to draw himself back towards God. So after 19 days of, uh, of just consuming water, he was like in a pit and physically uh, completely like he felt uh, not, not well. Uh, he felt the way that, that he was uh, like, it was a cry out to God. So, so from then, after being uh, malnourished for many days, uh, with only water, he sat at a piano and he read uh, a verse, Psalms 42. And he, uh, he, and he, this is his own words. He says, My eyes fell on the first verse of the chapter. As the, heart, as the deer panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. So after reading the verse, I begin to sing its message and write off the page. So I wrote, I wrote the first verse and the chorus of the song uh, pretty much straight through. The whole of the adventure was completed in a matter of minutes. I then repeat the song I just had written, and I wanted to seal it in my mind. I had no intention of showing the song to anyone, and he continues that it was, uh, it was to be for my own devotional time with the Lord. However, before leaving the school, going back to Seattle, I did share it with one person, his friend named Dave, and he then introduced it to the students of the school, and it became one of the favorites there. So that's how the song was uh, actually written, and and uh, sorry, and then how it, it actually spread later on. So he got his inspirations from reading Psalm chapter 42, verses 1 and 2, which reads, As the deer pants for the water, uh, water brook, so pants my soul for you, O Lord. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God, when shall I come and appear before God? So the psalmist uh, who wrote Psalm chapter 42, verses 1 to 2, was yearning for God in the midst of distress. To the chief musician, a contemplation of the son of Korah. So this was the verse that caught Marty's attention and inspired him to write this song. So the inspiration, uh, the psalmist in this passage also expressed the deep longing of his heart for God's presence. And it's the same message that the writer, as the dear, was trying to convey as well. So the message of As the Deer is about a deep and unquenchable longing for God's presence and a desire to know him more intimately. So let's examine the song uh, and see uh, to help us better understand uh, what, what it means. So we'll go through verse by verse. So the first verse is As the Deer panted for the water, so my soul longed after you. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. So the psalmist was referring to a deer panting or thirsting for water and comparing it to the, his soul longing for Christ. And the stanza refers to Christ as the object of our devotion. So our desire is for Christ, uh, is symbolized by the deer who pants for the water, Psalm chapter 42 verse 1. And the first and most obvious thing we can see is this incredible hunger and thirst for the Lord, or, or uh, his passion uh, shown by the author. He's comparing it to the deer who will seek a stream to quench his thirst. And we also see the idea of thirsting for God in Psalm chapter 61 verse, uh, 63 verse 1 and Psalm chapter 143 verse 6. And when we go to the New Testament, we see Jesus is our living water. So, and blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. So the deer needs water to survive. And just like every creature on this earth, without it, we will all perish. So in the spirit, it's the same thing. Jesus is our living water. We drink from, uh, from him. And we are then restored, refreshed, strengthened, and more. So why does the deer actually pant for the water? Uh, because the deer only pants when it's being uh, chased by a predator. So as soon as a deer escapes, he knows he is safe. He will then immediately look for water to replenish its uh, depleted inner stores because the deers are able to store water in their body. So however, if the deer runs for too long from an enemy and cannot get to water, the panting from lack of water will cause the, the deer to collapse and die. So 
So as the deer pants for water in Psalms chapter 42, means that uh, the writer was actually becoming exhausted to worn out and depleted from being pursued uh, by the enemy. And he reached to a point inside his, himself that he wanted to lay down and give up. So when you are starving to the point, uh, when you are at the point of starving and thirsting, then only truly we will seek what's important in our life to survive. So only God is our heart's uh, desire, and that is why we should long to worship Him. So nothing else the author, uh, is the author's heart's desire. Not money, not fame, not power, but God. And that is why he, he decided to dedicate his life uh, to worshipping God based on the verse. So thus, our soul, our soul should long for Christ, and our hearts desire Him as we would thirst for water in dry land. So, and one way in which we can fulfill this is by, uh, this desire is by worshipping the Lord. Psalm chapter 29, verses, verse 2. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So one lesson that we can learn from this first verse is that we should thirst for Christ. So nothing better pictures a person's need for God than the word thirst. When a person is busy uh, working, he or she often ignores such things as time. Uh, he, if you're busy, you may you skip lunch, you may skip appointments. But once that the person realizes that he or she is thirsty, then we will go all out in order to satisfy that need. So the process of becoming thirsty may be gradual, and the person may not realize that it's happening. But once it is there, then, we, then it must be faced. So a person's spiritual need for Jesus Christ often also works the same. For a long time, everything may seem to be just going fine in our life. Our immediate goals are met. Uh, it may be our education, our job, maybe our family, uh, belonging to a special organization. We are respected by our peers. Um, but and, and God and Jesus are just some passing thoughts. But however, as time goes on, the person then realizes that actually, we are lacking something, uh, and, and this, this thing will continue to ponder us. So some questions may pop, pop up in our life. What is the purpose of life? Uh, what's the meaning? Uh, why can't I be successful like other people? Or I don't know what I want to do with my life. And all these are indications of uh, spiritual uh, thirst. When the time arrives, only the answers to, satisf to satisfy and that demand is to turn to Jesus and to God and uh, the good news that he has given to us. So then, then only through God's word, we are able to find true purpose and meaning to life. In um, John chapter 7, verse 37, on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. John chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And finally, in John chapter 4, verse 14, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give to him uh, will become in him and a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So through Jesus Christ, we can gain eternal life and we will never, uh, we will never thirst again. So that's uh, the one lesson that we can learn from uh, the first verse, a stanza. Now we look at the second one, which is, you, you are my friend and you're my brother, even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. So here the author is referring to Christ as a friend, as a brother, and reminding us that we actually have a relationship with him. Even though Jesus Christ is our king, he still considers consider us to be his uh, friend and brother. And that shows how privileged we are as children of God. Uh, Jesus Christ is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. A man who has friends must himself be friendly but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. In John chapter 15, verse 13 to 15, it reads, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. So Jesus Christ is that, uh, telling us that we are his friends. And... Uh, and that he uh, consider us uh, to be uh, close and not servants. Mark chapter 3, verse 34 to 35, it reads, And he looked around in the circle at those who sat about him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. 
for whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and mother. So Jesus is acknowledging that if we continue to follow uh, God, follow Christ, we are considered his brothers. And yet he is also our king. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 16, he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And Matthew chapter 25, verse 34, then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, for you from the foundation of the world. So Jesus Christ is the king of our spiritual kingdom and he is our, our king and our Lord. And therefore, we should love him more than anything else. Um, Mark chapter 12, verse 29 to 30. And because of our relationship and what Christ has done for, for us, the author, the author of, of Asadia loves uh, says that he loves Christ more than anything other, so much more than anything. So Christ was willing to come down to earth to humble himself, to die on the cross for us. And our king, as our king, he sacrificed himself for doing nothing wrong. And he deserves all the love that we can give. So next, the lesson that we can learn is that we should have a strong relationship with Christ uh, as our king, brother, and our friend. Just as the song tells us, just as the deer needs water to survive, we also need a relationship with Christ to survive. Though the water will only keep the deer alive for its uh, number of years, our relationship with Christ, with Christ will give us eternal life. Our time should be spent seeking and worshipping God and making our mission, uh, making that a mission of our heart. Though we are, may not be worthy of, uh, worthy of being in the presence of Christ, He is still our friend, our brother, and our king. And He is a king who accepted us uh, as being just like Him in that we are all children of God. And He loves us uh, just like we love our families and our friends, but He loves us even more. So we should return His love with all our heart, our soul, and all our being. He gave His life for us so that we can spend eternity with Him. The least we could do is to give Him all our love and our attention and seek His will every day of our lives. So what, what is your life more than important, uh, is more important than Christ? And what benefit does it give you over and above what Christ has committed to us? So maybe this is a question that we, we need to think about. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26 reminds us that what reminds us of what is important. And what do you what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? So that's a, a reminder to us. The next uh, we can learn is uh, from verse 3. Uh, I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver, the apple of my eye. So to humans, gold and silver are very valuable material things. I think gold price has been increasingly uh, increasing, silver as well. Uh, but many cultures appreciate gold. Uh, but the author is saying that I want God more than the material things and only God can satisfy. The Lord, like his word, is better than any silver or gold. Psalms chapter 119 verse 72. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. Secondly, joy is a gift and he is a giver of every good and perfect gift. James chapter 1 verse 17 to 18. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation of, or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of the truth that we might be kind of first fruits of his cre uh, creatures. So because he is a, Jesus is the, is the real reason that we are able to uh, have every perfect gift and through this, we can have joy and peace, not through material things. And uh, therefore, uh, we should make him our apple of our eye, which simply is, which simply is a uh, figurative expression denoting uh, someone's favorite. So God is the apple of his eye, something that something or someone that we are extremely fond of or proud of. So Psalm chapter 17, verse 8, keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me under the shadow of your wings. So we should keep God as the apple of our eye. So the lesson that we can learn here is that no material things can satisfy us more than Christ who gives us eternal life. It is true that we, we want nice things in our life and, and most things require money. We work hard not only to support our family, but also to have enough money to enjoy life. 
And sometimes this has caused us to focus more on our jobs, our wants, and we forget what is important. But, therefore, but there is nothing more important than having Christ in our life. Uh, we may ask, but how do you then provide for my family if I'm not working hard at my job? But Christ doesn't tell us that we shouldn't work hard. He is simply saying that we should uh, not be focused on how much we make and that he will make sure that uh, our needs will be taken care of. It may be challenging to uh, have that kind of faith, um, but we need to seek, seek God, seek his guidance on, on everything, uh, every need we have, including our financial needs. So we see God's promise of meeting our needs in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. He says that he will continue to look after us. Uh, we are more precious than the, the other creatures that he takes care of. And it's only after we, we, are, we, are, we hand everything over to Christ that we can experience the, tr the true joy and freedom. And the song says that, reminds us that uh, he should be our, the apple of our eye. In other words, that the person or thing that we cherish above everything else. And finally, the, uh, we go to the chorus, which is, you alone are my strength, my shield, to you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. So the chorus emphasizes that Christ alone is the source of everything that our, spirit, our spirits need. Only in Christ that we can find strength, uh, the, to, the courage to go through life, the ch challenges that we face, and he is our shield that is able to protect us. And he will be there to protect us from uh, any harm's way. Uh, Spirit yields means to de devo de devote ourselves to give up something uh, or oneself, and only to God that we should devote our life to or give up for. Again, the psalmist is stating that only God is his heart's desire, nothing else, and ultimately he, he longs to worship God. And that should be our attitude. Uh, he alone, God, is our strength, our shield, our constant source of joy, and the uh, only one we can, only one who can give us eternal life. So, what else is your heart's desire? So, the lesson that we can learn is that God is our strength and our protector. Philippians chapter four verse thirteen: I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And um, and in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter forty one verse ten: Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So he is our protector. And um, that is why in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 11 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. And when we run to the Lord, he provides us with that protection. And we can see that also in Psalms chapter 91, which shares about the safety of abiding in the presence of God. And He not only that, he's able to then cleanse us. First John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not only that, he is able to refresh us. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 25. For I have satiated the weary soul, and I have replenished every, every sorrowful soul. And he is also able to heal us. Uh, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. So, through Jesus Christ, he, he is able to give us the strength and he is able to protect us. So in conclusion, the song is a testimony to the fact that there is nothing in this world that can satisfy uh, the longing of the heart. There is a thirst for God. Uh, the message of the song is, is that only God can satisfy the deepest longings of the human heart and he is the only one who can provide the joy, peace, uh, satisfaction and the soul and, and, and that the soul seeks. And therefore, he deserves our devotion and worship. So I think uh, that's the sharing I have for our, to our lesson today on the song. Maybe uh, before we sing, is there anything or anyone would like to add or provide any, any feedback on? Before, uh, and then we'll end with, the, with singing the song. Okay, if not, uh, I'll be I'll be leading a song. We will sing each verse, and in between the verse, there will be the chorus. So, 
Has the dear pen for the water so my soul longs after you? You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. You alone my strength, my shield, to you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You're my friend and you are my brother even though you are a king. I love you more than any other so much more than anything. You my strength, my shield, to you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to work. You. Thank you. We have the closing prayer uh, followed by the announcement. Right. <clears throat> Let's pray. Our Father in heaven. Bless you be thy name, Father. We acknowledge your greatness, acknowledge your power and your might, and your love towards mankind that you have sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And truly, Father, we are so grateful that we have our Father so loving and so care for us. And Father, we are so thankful for the lesson you have learned this morning, this evening, so appropriate understand that we need to long for you, for your love, the desire for your, your care and, and your word. Knowing that, Father, one day we will be with you and we will stay faithfully on, in this world. And knowing that, Father, in the end of our life, what is more important is to be with you in heaven. Help us, Father, to long for you. And knowing that, Father, you are a giver of life, Give up eternal life. And Father, we know that the one, the creator of all things, indeed, Father, you have a power to offer us the things that we need, the things that we desire, the things that we crave for. And most importantly, Father, we know that you can give us life eternal, everlasting life that no one else can give. Father, we thank you for Brother Keith who has shared with us this lesson. And we thank you for his life and his commitment and his dedication in your kingdom. And we pray that the song that we sing when we 
the chorus that we sing, when we sing again, the next time we'll be able to sing it more meaningfully, sing it with purpose, uh, and that we understand what we are singing. And Father, we pray that you bless our church, bless those who are not well. In particular, Father, we want to pray for our sister Lina's cousin sister, uh, who had said an operation and recovering, and pray that she will be able to go through the physio sessions and able to completely recover. And we, and we thank you for some of our wonderful sisters who have been, been there to visit her this this afternoon and be able to care for her. And we are appreciative of their, their time and effort. We pray that you continue to watch over us and even as you go through this week, keep us safe, keep us uh, well in all things that we do and our safe travel as well. Guide us, Father, to pray in us in Jesus' name. Amen. Church would like to thank Brother Wong Thai for the lesson. We have, we have visiting Brother who joined our Bible class this evening. We have Brother Lawrence and Brother Chang Lo. So I believe Brother Lawrence is, is here. He's, he's on his way to uh, tomorrow. will be traveling to Genting Highland for the CABL. No? <laughs> so there's a big group of uh, members from different congregations will be traveling up to Genting for CABL. Uh. So uh, please remember them in your prayer. Uh, next week for Bible class, Brother Sam Tan will be sharing. Uh, you'll be back to the theme of reason to believe. Uh, why am I a Christian? Brother Sam Tan will share with us his uh, Christian journey. Then for the uh, this coming Sunday, Bible class, we have a guest speaker, Brother Paul Go uh, from Jurong Church of Christ. He, uh, for the Bible class, he will follow our uh, series of Bible study. Uh, he will teach us on David becomes king. Uh, becomes king. Then for the sermon, he will share with us, let me come in. <clears throat> Pray, uh, pray request, uh, pray request which is not in our bulletin, uh, which we re uh, receive update from Brother Ng uh, via Sister Lina. So please remember to pray for uh, Lina's cousin uh, uh, by name Eileen. Uh. So she have uh, she have completed her brain uh, to remove a tumor in the brain, uh, and she have been discharged. This evening uh. so uh but uh, uh she, the her hand her brain and and one of her hand um, i mean the comic maybe the communication uh not smooth yet uh, so she can't move her, her hand uh. so please remember her in your prayer so we thank brother who visited uh her this evening uh. we thank um, sister shirley as well as sister tina and uh, that's all from, from me, we shall dismiss.